It's autumn in Colorado's high country. If you listen carefully, you just might hear the ringing of the maroon bells and the golden aspen quake in anticipation of winter. From these majestic peaks, Maroon Creek courses downward toward Aspen, Colorado to a special occasion, the ribbon cutting ceremony of the new Maroon Creek Bridge. So welcome each one of you here today. Isn't this magnificent? Since I've got 34 years with the Department of Transportation, and I guarantee you from the very day that I started here, I heard about the Maroon Creek Bridge. Even whenever I was at the lower ranks, it was the Maroon Creek Bridge. Well, where is this thing? I finally found out where it was, and what a glorious day we made it today to finally get to a place where we've got traffic on it. We've got people here celebrating. The new Maroon Creek Bridge replaces the 120-year-old historic bridge, helping to solve the entrance to Aspen bottleneck on State Highway 82. One of the first calls I got was from Mick Ireland, and he said, Ed, you got to do something about that bridge and going into Aspen. He said, do you know how old that bridge is? I said, I don't know, 50, 60 years old. He said, it's 115 years old. That old bridge is not going to be recycled, it's going to be reused, so that bridge won't be torn down and taken to a scrap mill. It'll, it'll stay there, not just as a monument to history and the miners who put in those hand-carved foundations and, and the two railroads that raced to get to Aspen for silver, the Rio Grande and the Midland, but it'll also be useful. If we ever do light rail, we will be reusing. And reusing, of course, is higher in the pecking order than recycling. Aspen began as a mining camp during the silver boom of the 1870s. The railroad companies raced to lay track and bridges to the newest silver boom town. In the winter of 1887 and 1888, the Colorado Midland Railway erected the prefabricated steel railroad trestle bridge in just six weeks. About five years later, the United States Congress embraced the gold standard and demonetized silver, causing the silver market to collapse. Most of Aspen's residents steadily left the area in search of fortunes elsewhere. By 1927, the Colorado Midland Rail Line lay abandoned. Eventually, the Maroon Creek Bridge became the property of the Colorado Department of Highways. By the following year, the oldest bridge in Colorado was converted to automobile use. In the mid-1940s, Returning World War II veterans from the fabled 10th Mountain Division brought skiing to the Colorado Rockies. Boom times returned to Aspen. This time, a golden boom in skiing and upscale tourism. Today, Aspen's per capita income is among the highest in the nation. As Aspen grew into a world-class resort, the highway department monitored the bridge structure that was carrying more traffic and heavier loads than ever. Over the decades, floodwaters, weather, and time had taken its toll on this old, reliable workhorse. It was about five years ago to the day, in October of 2003, that we became aware of the significant damage to the existing Maroon Creek Bridge. The bridge is close to 120 years old when the damage was discovered. We were able to get in and make temporary repairs, but it was quite evident to us that this bridge needed to be replaced. Since the 1970s, the Maroon Creek Bridge had been an ongoing political issue with the locals. In late October 2003, the bridge's sufficiency rating suddenly dropped from 41 to 9 out of 100. At that point, replacing the bridge became an urgent concern for all. I think this first came to light when we had some problems a few years back and the old Maroon Creek Bridge had to be shut down for a period of time to heavy truck traffic. Uh, it caused some problems and we had some delays and I believe in some regard that we had some safety issues with the old bridge. Though the bridge remained safe for public use, the community rallied and addressed the need as a single voice. Against seemingly improbable odds, all parties joined to take a proactive approach to find funding for a new bridge. 
Yes, the EOTC, the Elected Officials Transportation Committee, which is made up of the elected officials of Aspen, Pitkin County, and the town of Snowmass, contributed $1.5 million to the design of the bridge. So we have a lot of local funding in this, but it wouldn't have been possible without uh, some really good work from CDOT in the design because they created a design that, if, as you can see in the back... The Colorado Department of Transportation, or CDOT for short, had pbs and under contract for a concept-level study when the design funding materialized. CDOT then selected Parsons Transportation Group for the final design of the new bridge. The normal 12-month design period was compressed into just five months to target a March 2005 bid date. So through regional cooperation and cooperation locally and through CDOT, we're able to develop enough funds to build the new structure. When considering the design and construction of the replacement bridge, the design group conducted an extensive study seeking input from the stakeholders across the community and did so throughout the process. The result? A context-sensitive solution that took into account community concerns, traffic flow issues, environmental considerations, and the historic preservation of the old bridge. The environmental impact statement, record of decision, which had been done back in the late 80s, early 90s, I believe, uh, required that the new bridge be um, complementary in design to the historic original railroad trestle bridge. And the new bridge had to be environmentally friendly in the, in the manner the, in which it was constructed. Unlike the, the, the old bridge constructors who built the Maroon Creek Bridge in the late 1800s, we had to protect the wetlands down in the Maroon Creek Basin. Not only the wetlands, which were a critical part of the riparian environment, but there's also some very nice vegetation down there. Those are all some of the reasons why we had to tread lightly when we built the new bridge. A bridge is more than just a bridge. Materials, style, structural requirements, and construction methods all help to define a bridge. The new Maroon Creek Bridge is a cast-in-place, concrete-segmental, box-girder, post-tension bridge, erected using the balanced cantilever method. And if you know what all that means, then you probably have a degree in structural engineering. Since most of us aren't engineers, let's take a look at how this remarkable structure was built. The structure of the new bridge consists of two A-shaped vertical supports, also known as piers two abutments that support the ends of the superstructure where it meets the top of the basin slope, and the 620-foot-long superstructure that forms the horizontal structural span. Uh, we began the project in uh, June of 2005. We had a really good local contractor that uh, was awarded the contract. Uh, BTE uh, joint ventured with Atkinson Construction. There was a, a pretty steep learning curve in, in constructing the bridge. Uh, the piers were difficult and had to be constructed in, in sections. To build the foundations for the piers, Anderson Drilling of Denver augured 12 drilled shafts down to bedrock. We're just going underneath the highway bridge right now. These 54-inch diameter drilled shafts, also known as caissons, go as deep as 30 feet below grade. Next, steel cages were placed down the shafts for reinforcement, before pumping in concrete to complete the caissons. Construction began on the piers in late fall 2005 starting with the Down Valley Pier.
and continued simultaneously with the abutments and the up valley pier through that first winter. The abutments were supported at the top of the steep basin side slopes through 8 inch diameter micro piles drilled deep to secure the foundation. The Up Valley Pier construction followed into the spring and summer of 2006. Once the pier was completed, a 25-foot long section of the superstructure, called a pier table, was cast on top of the pier. The superstructure of the bridge is a hollow concrete tube called a box girder. To begin the superstructure, specialized form work called form travelers were lifted by a crane onto each end of the pier table. From these form travelers, the construction crews alternately cast in place the segments in 15-foot increments, first one side of the pier and then the other side. Each segment was post-tensioned by using hydraulic jacks to stretch high-strength steel cables through ducts in the concrete. Stretching these steel tendons like rubber bands and then locking them off produces a compressive force that resists the pull of gravity on the structure. The balanced cantilever construction method keeps the weight balanced, ensuring the integrity of the bridge during construction. After ramping up the learning curve and encountering better weather, the crews reduced the cycle time of casting, curing, and moving the form traveler to one segment per week. When the first balanced cantilever section was completed, the two form travelers were then moved to the Up Valley Pier Table, and the process was repeated. The second cantilever was completed in late 2007, and the main span closure connecting the two cantilevers above Maroon Creek was cast in December 2007. The closure of the final span to the Up Valley abutment was made in January 2008, completing the 620-foot long bridge superstructure. After the cantilevered decks were completed, bottom slab tendons were then stressed to complete the main span. Now you know what a cast-in-place, concrete segmental, box girder, post-tension bridge is, and how it's built using the balanced cantilever method. In May, the last step to prepare the bridge for traffic was completed, the paving of the concrete driving surface.
And looking at the area now, it's really hard to believe that a major concrete structure like this uh, was constructed here over the past uh, two seasons. And now it's been restored pretty much to its uh, natural state. The mission of the Colorado Department of Transportation was to provide a multimodal solution. The bridge can now accommodate a mix of two exclusive bus lanes, two general purpose lanes with bike and pedestrian paths. CDOT clearly hits the mark with this marvelous structure. This bridge carries between 20 and 30,000 cars per day, so this is a critical link not only to the city of Aspen, but it's also a critical link for the, the whole region. This is the first community, the first, I believe, the first rural community to actually have uh, exclusive bus lanes. The Maroon Creek Bridge Project was extremely successful. First of all, it was the close teamwork and collaboration with the local government and the citizens and the design team and contractors that we had on board. It was a great group effort between the FHWA, CDOT, and all the local representatives. Uh, I think we've got a great bridge going forward into the future. Yay! Woo! Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Yeah, baby. Let's let the traffic roll. That's what we did this for. It's great to be able to open this new bridge alongside its 120-year-old cousin. Uh, that the miners built back in 1888. This project with the bus lanes and the bridge take care of all but the last quarter mile of that, that project. Uh, it's great to, to end the, the log jam, the 30 years of political gridlock, getting this project done and, and making an, a great advance on the, on the entrance to Aspen project. The ribbon cutting in October 2008 recognized the ingenuity of the designers and contractors and the cooperative spirit between state agencies and local citizens. A new welcoming entrance to Aspen was long overdue. Today, the new Maroon Creek Bridge soars proudly 100 feet over the Maroon Creek Basin below. After the new bridge's completion, the old bridge was left in place to honor its designation in the National Historic Register. Eventually, the trestle will be restored to its original, narrower design. Who knows? Someday, the old bridge may once again carry train passengers through the valley this time on a modern light rail system. Though Aspen is often considered a jet setter's destination, most travelers will cross the new Maroon Creek Bridge as they come to marvel at the Maroon Bells, to fish in the Roaring Fork, or to enjoy a day of gliding through powder snow on one of Aspen's four mountains. The Maroon Creek Bridge serves as a new gateway to Aspen and will no doubt remain a lasting legacy to Colorado's future.